Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at a works example of a question where we need to draw an Arrhenius plot. So this video assumes a basic knowledge of the Arrhenius equation. The question says, using the following data, find the activation energy and frequency factor for this reaction, the decomposition of hydrogen iodide. And it gives us a temperature in degrees Celsius and the rate constant in moles per decimeter cubed per second. So the first thing we need is the straight line form of the Arrhenius equation. So the y equals mx plus c form. So here it is. So on our y-axis, when we come to plot the graph, we'll have natural log of k, the rate constant. m is the gradient, and it's going to give us a negative line, and the gradient will be equal to the activation energy over the gas constant, and we can get activation energy from this gradient just by times in by the gas constant, which is 8.314. Then x... The x-axis will be the reciprocal of temperature, so just 1 over temperature, and temperature has to be in Kelvin. And C is the y-intercept, and that will be natural log of this thing called the frequency factor. The next thing we need to do is to convert our temperatures into Kelvin, and we can do that by adding 273. So we've got our temperatures in Kelvin, we've added 273 onto these temperatures in degrees Celsius. So we've converted that to the correct unit. Next, let's do two new columns where we work out 1 over T, so the reciprocal of temperature. The units of that will be Kelvin minus 1. And we also need to take natural logs of the rate constant. Now let's take our natural logs. So here we've got our ln k values. And the next thing we need to do is to plot ln k versus 1 over t. So to give you an idea of what the graph should look like, it should look something like this. Our x-axis is up here, so this is 1 over temperature, units Kelvin minus 1. This is our y-axis, natural log of the rate constant. And because this number's been logged, it has no units. Now, our large negative numbers, these belong down here. So our minus 12.75 will be down there. Our minus 2.57 will be up here. And then we can put our times 10 to the minus 3 in with this axis title to make it easier for ourselves. So then we can plot these numbers as just 1.29, 1.49, 1.75 if you find that easier. So I'll show you what I mean in a second and I'll show you how to do the graph on graph paper. So I've chosen my scale and I've labelled my axes. It's up to you what scale you want to use as long as it's sensible and you use the majority of the graph paper. Then that's fine. So we're going to plot these three points.
Then we'll do a line of best fit through these three points. And our next step is to calculate the gradient of this line. So I'm going to draw my triangle. And the steeper the gradient, the steeper the line, that means the larger the activation energy for this reaction. So in other words, the more likely it will need heat in order to occur at a reasonable rate. So I'm just going to get my two y values, which are minus 2.56, minus 2.65, and minus 10. And my two x values, which are, let's use the ruler, one point six one and remember that's times ten to the minus three and one point three times ten to the minus three then our gradient remember we work that out by changing y over changing x so minus 2.65 minus minus 10 and a minus minus gives a plus so basically that's minus 2.65 plus 10 and we'll divide that by 1.61 times 10 to the minus 3 take away 1.3 times 10 to the minus 3 and pop that into our calculators so I've got a gradient of 23,710, which sounds about right. And remember the gradient is equal to minus Ea over R. So to get the activation energy, what we do is times this value for the gradient by the gas constant. So Ea equals the gradient, 23,710, times by the gas constant which is 8.314 okay 197,122 and that's in joules so it will be a big number convert that into kilojoules 197 kilojoules